What is happening, YouTube? Cowboy here. Welcome back to Monster Hunter World, and this is my Gunlance build. So when it comes to the Lance family, I would consider the Lance to be the older brother, the more studious one. You know, slow and steady wins the race. The Gun Lance, on the other hand, is the younger crazy brother that likes to party, get drunk, and then after a short stint, pass out on the couch, completely wasted, and then do it again when he wakes back up. But to take a look at the build, here you go. I want to point out this is a build for a normal shelling style gun lance. I would not suggest using this build with wide or long style shelling. And to hear more about our decoration choices and why, make sure to stay tuned. But to go into the build in depth, as I mentioned, the playstyle here is around a normal style of shelling of gun lance. Now, normal style is great for a burst fire oriented build, which is exactly what this is. The main gist here is we have an infinite combo in triangle and circle. Overhead smash, burst fire, hit triangle for wide sweep, quick reload, overhead smash, burst fire, triangle for wide sweep, quick reload, overhead smash, burst fire, and then when you're finally about to run out, just go for a worm stake cannon to finish the job. And that's really all there is to this build. Now a couple things I want to point out are standing combo, of course, you go triangle and circle, and then circle. From the overhead smashes when you do your burst fire. If you're advancing on the target, forward and triangle into triangle and circle will give you access to the overhead at which point you can go into the combo. After either the burst fire or alternatively the wide sweep, you can go into a worm stake. After wide sweep, triangle or circle will do worm stake. After burst fire, just hit circle to do worm stake. And in general, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to keep doing that infinite combo that you saw me doing right here. And then when it looks like the monster is about to get back up and run away, instead of going for the reload, that's when you'll deploy the worm stake. Now another important thing here I want to note is after every single attack, with the exception of you know, worm stake, weapons fire, stuff like that, you can hit triangle and circle for a quick reload. However, to reload your worm stake from a standard position, you'll have to do triangle and circle and do the manual reload. So keep that in mind, you're going to have some downtime when you do the worm stake, but it is still a great move to put on out if the monster's about to move. Uh, and aside from that, that's really all there is to this playstyle. I mean, there's actually a lot more to the gun lance. You know, you have pokes that are comparable to that of the lance. Uh, you know, we have the mobility and all that stuff, but that's not really what you're going to go for with this type of gun lance, as well as um, charging our shells. That's also something you're not going to want to do with this type of gun lance. Those are different playstyles altogether. So moving in depth into the gear, what we picked and why, first thing I want to point out is the gun lance here, and that is Royal Burst. Now this is hands down the best gun lance in the game for a burst fire build. On top of having the normal shelling type, we also have level 4 shells, which means we're going to get the best bang for our buck when it comes to dropping out burst fires on monsters using the Royal Burst. You get this going down the Rathian tree, has pretty respectable damage, it can hit white sharpness, has some affinity baked in, and on top of that it has poison on it, which is nice to have. Moving on from there though, Artillery Charm 3. Definitely going to need this, it's going to be a 30% boost to our file damage, in addition to reducing the cooldown on weapons fire by 50%, which means instead of saving it for wake up, you could start battles with it, you could drop it in the middle of battles, and you could still have it ready to go for a wake up. Moving on from there, Dragon King Eye Patch for some points and weakness exploit. Chalice Sista Beta and Death Stun Shield Beta for points in Handicraft. Kaiser Vambrace's Beta for Weakness Exploit. And then Nirgigante Coil Beta for some attack. Now, before we go into the decorations, one thing I want to talk about is Weakness Exploit. Because I'm sure people are like, wait a minute, Cowboy, you didn't do Weakness Exploit with Charge Blade. Why are we doing it here? With Charge Blade, I felt Focus was more important to get things up. Whereas we don't use Focus with the Gun Lance. Now, just for the sake of punching the numbers through... Burst fires hit 29, that hits 194. So with six burst fires hitting for 29 each, that is 174 damage. As you saw right there, my wide sweep did 194 damage. Uh, on top of that, just to take a look at the overhead slam. See, that's 109 with a non-crit. Let's try and get a crit here with it. 137. So... While we're seeing really high damage on the files, we're seeing respectable damage in the overhead smash as well as the wide sweep. And because 
our rotation involves those two moves and the files, I figured why the hell not, let's pick up the weakness exploit and just boost the damage of those even further. Um, if I had a bunch of attack I could slot in, I probably would, but I don't, so I went for the weakness exploit because that's going to probably give us the best return on boosting those abilities. On top of that, I think it's important to note that when it comes to files, attack isn't going to boost the files. Stuff like maximum might, uh, they can't crit. Stuff like uh, peak performance, agitator, none of that will impact your file damage. Artillery will impact your file damage, but that's going to be it. So keep that in mind. If you're just trying to stack a bunch of attack, you know, it's not helping your files at all. But it could actually help your regular lance attacks. And to that extent, we're going to be going for weakness exploit because that'll give us the best returns in terms of damage per point investment. Moving on from there, onto the decorations in particular. We pick up a handicraft jewel. That's going to boost our handicraft to level 5. Pretty straightforward here. Having the level 5 handicraft is going to give us a hefty bar of white, which is a huge boost to our normal attacks. Once again, this does not impact shelling, but it will help our normal attacks. And on top of that, with as fast as we burn through our sharpness with shelling, it's going to be nice to have a longer bar. Moving on from there, and going down the list, weakness exploit, which I already explained. Pretty straightforward. Our artillery... Definitely a standard pickup here. As I mentioned, that is going to boost our damage by 30% and give us more Wevern Fire. Two points in attack boost. Uh, basically just have this because it's on the Nirgante coil. Now is where we get into user preference. Uh, if I had three, I would run three Iron Wall Jewels as opposed to Grinder. Now, Grinder is a fantastic pickup for this build because of how fast we're going to be burning sharpness. But because I already have a Protective Polish gem... I don't really feel I need the three points in grinder anymore. So alternatively, I would go for three points in guard to take that uh, the greatly decrease the impact as well as the 15% stamina reduction. I find guard really nice, and since we have one of the better shields in the game, we might as well utilize that. Moving on from there, however, capacity boost. This is another auto inclusion, very similar to how it is with the charge blade. Now. Similar to the charge blade, if you do not have a gem, magazine jewel for capacity boost, Drop the Death Stench Heal, pick up the Dogogama Greaves. You're going to want this because that's just going to be one more file. And you might be like, well, hang on, files are only hitting for 29 damage. Why am I doing all this work for one? And it's because file damage is completely unmitigated. So that 29 damage is pure damage. Whereas typically if you hit a monster in like a hard part, instead of hitting it for 50, you might hit it for like 25. Just for example, these are obviously made up numbers. The file is going to do that 29 regardless of if it's a hard part or a soft part. Just fantastic. A speed sharpening, of course, as I mentioned, if you don't have protective polish, I would definitely go three points in this. Guard up, because I had a gem for it. There's not many other level two gems that I would consider working in there. Um, and to be honest, I find guard up to just be really nice to have. Although it is uh, very niche in its usage, you know, if you're in a case where you're not going to be able to invade a time, just being able to block everything in the game is really cool. And lastly, of course, we have Protective Polish, which is going to be probably the biggest boon for this build because it's going to give us a minute of uninterrupted infinite combo before we even have to worry about sharpening our weapon up. And that's really all there is to it for the Gun Lance. Like I said, this is a pretty straightforward weapon and very much like, you know, live fast, die young type playstyle. Uh, the only other thing I really want to touch on is going to be our Weverns Fire. A lot of people like to save Weverns Fire as a wake up attack when the monster's sleeping. And it is an excellent wake-up attack, but I think it's worth noting that because we have three levels in artillery, you could work in Weverence Fire at the start of the battle, halfway through the battle, and as a wake-up. It'll be off cooldown. You can see that by how our lance is glowing red. When that finally stops glowing red, Weverence Fire is ready to be used again. But either way, let's jump on into a hunt, show you what this thing is capable of. So to showcase off the gun lance, we're going to be going after Kushala Deora. And Kushala in particular, I think is probably one of the easier targets to take out with the Royal Burst Gun Lance. He's weak to poison, and more importantly, even though Kushala has a number of parts on him that are very armored and, you know, they resist damage, that doesn't matter when it comes to shelling. So if you're having trouble with Kushala, the Gun Lance is a really decent weapon to go for in general to help take him down. Coming over here that put on our protective polish and start things off with a bang
No, come down. You can see it's very much just kind of the same thing. Like there's a lot of rinse and repeat with this, but uh, I mean the damage is undeniable. Notice, even though we're in green, we're still just kind of trucking along right now. And very, very soon, it's going to be sharpening time. Probably right now, actually. That was very rude. Oh no, here we go. Oh yeah, get blocked on, nerd. No, Kushala. You should know you're not allowed to leave. You're too busy being filled with shells. Oh, I really wanted that steak. And he's dead. Didn't even get a chance to fly away. Tried to fly away, got flashed, and then promptly got his ass whooped. So, uh, yeah. I think out of all of our weapon showcases, that might be one of the quickest kills so far. So, uh, yeah, that's the gun lance. I mean, you know, like I said back at the showcase, it is, it's a very straightforward weapon especially with this setup it's just you know that infinite combo of just bursting and dealing damage and bursting and dealing damage and with a little bit of practice like full disclosure i think i have probably less than 10 hours played with the gun lance and you saw what i just did to an elder dragon so i imagine that somebody that's a master with this weapon does this on like a consistent regular basis but Definitely a fantastic weapon, and in the right hands, it is definitely a force to be reckoned with. Let's see what we got. Four ten, not too shabby. Either way, guys, thanks for coming by and watching. As always, uh, as for the next weapon showcase, I actually do have weapons or weapon builds for every weapon in the game finished up so at this point it's uh you know, really just kind of bouncing around and finding time to do it i'm going to try and get one more out before i leave on my work trip uh, but if i don't in time then i'll probably have it up over the weekend for you but we got hammer coming up as well as the hunting horn heavy bow gun and from there i'll be going into some other weapon build variations that deviate from the ones i've already uploaded so Either way, thanks for the continued support as always. If you found the video helpful, make sure to drop a like, and we will catch you guys next time with more Monster Hunter World.